Ready for war, Captain. Okay. Ready for war. Good. Oh, this is a good setup we got going here, everybody. The rotten banana super bait, stuff with tuna. Looking good. We got the classic anchovy rig that Steve's got going here, and then we got the 360 going again. The tide is switching perfectly right now, the next hour, so it should be the best bite. So hopefully, it's action as soon as we drop in. So down here where Steve is fishing, they have a really, really cool program where all the guides put in a big chunk of money at the beginning of the season for the sea lion patrol. I think we should adopt in more places. Works for these guys really, really, really good. And it keeps these fish, these, these very vital kings that we all lose to these sea lions every single day. Keeps them on your line, keeps that fish coming in, not getting eaten for no reason. And it allows these fish to stay in a healthy population. Just went through a giant ball of fish. I got slammed on the uh, 360. We're about to turn around here in about another couple hundred yards. We're gonna go right back through them, so I feel pretty good about this. There, dude, look at that purple back. <laughs> yes, brother. Nice work. Right there, everybody. Boom. Wow. What an impressive fish. Holy smoke. Where's that bomb? Wow, everybody. Once again, <laughs> second giant. Steve, right out the back of the boat. Just fed it to him. Look at how deep that hook is in his mouth. I think it was almost blood out by the time we got her in the boat. <laughs> Huge hand again. Didn't go At 20. least 20. Didn't go 20. Didn't go 20. But she'll go 20. She'll go 20. Well done, my friend. That's so badass. <laughs> Drop a like, comment below with whether or not you guys have ever even seen a king this big, let alone caught one yourself. Of course, we'll be picking the comment of the day every day, so be sure to interact with this video. That's one of the most beautiful king salmon I've ever seen. So the one rod here with the super bait wasn't getting bit, so we decided both Steve and I got bit on both those couple passes, and there's a pile of fish still net flying. So we're going rogue spinner, anchovy, down to the short bus flasher, a couple ounces of lead. Oh, that one's good. Especially on the back, on trolling back up river. <laughs> All right. Can you keep it? Heck yeah, we are. Well, everybody, we got a little surf perch. perch. Heck yeah. We were just talking about going jetty fishing. A perch taco on the menu tonight, everybody. We're cruising up for a little dockside lunch. Kind of cool. We got this little dockside restaurant bar thing over here which is super convenient so bite kind of died off can get a little bit more energy in ourselves it's not like catching a giant 20 pound salmon isn't exciting enough but 
We're gonna go grab some grub. We're gonna try to make a game plan for tomorrow. It seems like this thing is gonna roll into one extra day. So we're gonna get that all sorted out. We're gonna get some grub in our tummies. And we're gonna catch a fish. All right, so Steve's getting his big fish all bagged up. And we noticed when we got into the fish house here, some of our buddies over here had a couple extra fish, and we said, hell, they were so big, all these fish were so big, we're gonna use the carcass trick again. Instead of eating this good meat that we want to either smoke or just eat as a, a regular meal, I'm gonna take the spoon again to these three carcasses here, four carcasses, and we're gonna make a special salmon dip. So we're gonna get all this stuff cleaned out, we're gonna get our bag full of meat ready, we're gonna take you back to camp and show you this awesome recipe. And the rivers. All right, so we got our meat all cleaned up. Got a really nice bag of meat this time. I have enough even to make some more burgers like we did last night. If you guys did not see uh, last night's episode, be sure to go back and check that out. Go down on the page, click on that link, and check out yesterday's recipe. It was absolutely delicious. If you haven't seen it, check out yesterday's episode. Got a couple giant fish. Cool things happened. We ate some good food. Now, we're gonna run to the store, get a couple of ingredients, and we're gonna show you one of my favorite salmon dips that you can have right in camp. In order to use this fish in the dip, of course, you need to have it cooked. A lot of times if I have smoked salmon or I have leftover fish from dinner that night, I'll use it in this exact same recipe, but today we were lucky enough to have a few big carcasses to use, so I took those and I'm gonna use that meat instead, but I have to cook it first. So I'm gonna go very, very simple on this because really you just, you want a lot of that fish flavor. All I have with me is a little McCormick's roasted garlic and bell pepper seasoning. I'm gonna melt this butter down, I'm gonna dump all this fish in, I'm gonna give it a light seasoning and I'm just gonna quickly get that fish nice and cooked so that I can add it into my Tupperware tray here and then add all the rest of my ingredients. Cream cheese, which is the base, that's gonna offer you that tackiness and that, that ability to mix that fish together, plus get that nice flavor of the cheese. We're gonna use a little bit of green onion. I'm gonna put a shallot in there. Then I'm gonna use a little bit of the smoked blue diamond almonds as well. I'm gonna crush those up and add them into that. So, very, very delicious combo. You can use any kind of nuts, whether it's walnuts or peanuts or anything like that you wanna crush up and put in there. But my favorite's almonds for, by far. So I'm gonna go nice, really nice and thin shavings of this green onion here. Of course, you don't want great big chunks as you take each little bite. Because we're just gonna be eating this with crackers. This also goes absolutely excellent on like a good sourdough bread or a, a Wonder Bread white. Anything like that makes a great sandwich, a little salmon sandwich. You can even put it on a bun, toast it in a toaster oven, have like a salmon bake, a little melt, put a little American cheese on there. There's really a lot of options. And I'm gonna probably chop these up twice. So I'm gonna go as thin as shavings as I can make here. You can see it really does look a lot like a red onion, but I'm not gonna be crying from it. I'm gonna go back through this whole thing one more time, just like so. Bam. Because again, all this is just gonna get mixed in raw. I don't wanna be cooking these onions or anything into that fish. I'm gonna let that do it all by itself. All right. That's sounding about right. I'm gonna dump all this stuff right in there. Man, that looks like some delicious meat, you guys get the seasoning on there while that fish is still a little bit raw so it has time to kind of cook in its flavor into that meat. And I'm loving this red pepper as well. It's gonna add a little bit of spice, but I also have another secret that I haven't busted out yet for you guys. Gonna go a nice little covering here. Again, this has zero salt in it, so really all I'm adding is flavor. Just like that, looks good. And for the grand finale ingredient, that's not gonna go until last, the old liquid smoke. Now, of course, if you've already smoked your fish, if you're using some leftover smoked fish or just a fresh smoked fish to make this, 
I like to eat my fr smoked fish fresh, just plain, but if you're gonna add it into some kind of dip like this, if it didn't turn out quite how you want it, a little bit of this smoke is not necessary, but for this one, since we're not smoking this fish, we want that kind of light smoky flavor. We'll be getting some of that flavor from the almonds as well, but we're gonna add a little bit of that smoke as well, that little liquid smoke, and not much, it's very strong stuff. Now, lastly, what I'm talking so much about is my almonds. We go about a good handful or so, just like that. Each one of these is gonna be a pain in the butt, but since I'm out here on the jetty cooking, I'm just gonna take, just like that, you're gonna press down, either use a fork or a, a spoon or whatever you got, and I'm just gonna try to bust up each one of these. It doesn't have to be in tiny pieces because these things are so tasty, it doesn't hurt getting a good chunk of them. So I'm just gonna go through. If you have a little, you know, like a, if you're using this at home and you got a little meat tenderizer or something, I like to just put them in a Ziploc, hammer the crap out of them, maybe take some of your frustrations out on these poor almonds. They never hurt nobody, but you know what? They're there. Keep crushing that bad boy up. Just like so. You can get them finer than that, but I don't mind them a little chunky. Get this a little bit mixed up. Oh my god, it smells delicious. Mmm. That butter and that red pepper. A little bit of gar a lot of bit of garlic. I can definitely smell that garlic here. Alright, so now. While my stuff is cooking here, right before my fish is finished, I'm just gonna take two bricks of cream cheese. And I used probably, I don't know, two and a half pounds or so of fish on this. It came off with three really large salmon. So I'm gonna use all of it up instead of leaving it to waste. I'm gonna actually just, if you got about, I'd say about pound to pound. If you got one pound of salmon meat, you're gonna wanna go with one whole brick of cheese. You don't wanna have it too much cheese. You don't wanna have it too much salmon. So maybe just add it tentatively. Add the cheese first, dump the salmon on top of it, see what adds up. Kind of preference it to yourself, how much, what proportion you want of cheese to salmon. You guys, can you smell it? it tastes wonderful. The texture is nice and, like, Nice and flaky. It has like almost like a crab lobster feel to it. So now what I'm gonna do, you don't have to go too crazy on the cooking. You just wanna make sure that this thing is done. You don't need a lot of raw fish in there. It might hurt your tummy. Obviously it doesn't hurt mine because I like eating it raw. But now we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna let this cool off just a little bit so we don't melt our cheese too bad. But it actually might help you a little bit to have it somewhat warm because it'll help the whole blending of the two itself. So let this fish calm down just a little bit, let it cool off. Then we're gonna add it in to our cheese. We're gonna add the rest of our ingredients and then we are gonna chow. All right, so now that I already ate half the pan, we're gonna go ahead and just dump that whole crap and caboodle in there, just like so. They are looking so good, you guys. So what I'm gonna do first before I add in the rest of the ingredients, I'm gonna start getting this stuff mixed up a little bit here like that okay so now that I have my cheese evenly mixed in I'm gonna add my liquid smoke here and this is very 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 delicate you guys you can ruin your whole dish with this stuff but it will also make your dish by adding that little bit of flavor Rip that off and I'm gonna use the cap as my gauge here don't pour it over I'm gonna use about half a cup full that's it that's all I'm putting in there now that liquid smoke you can already smell that real hickory kind of nice smoke flavor like it just got pulled out of the big smoker on the side of the highway gonna get our veggies and all our crisp and having these raw is gonna offer that little bit of crisp putting those almonds in there is gonna have a little bit more of that that body to it it's gonna have like a slight crunch as well as that nice soft salmon meat with that cheese and look at what's happening here everybody check this out oh my god the smells those onions and that smoke flavor Everything blending together. Smell the smokiness from those almonds. And I'm gonna get to dipping here. See, you got some onion, got some green onion, got a couple of almonds in there. Got that salmon, perfect amount of cheese. Oh my God. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have this finished by the time we make it six hours home. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the ride today. It was a hard day of fishing, hard day of travel. 
Got some good info. We've been out running these fires for three days now, but we've done it. We've managed to not get locked down, not get stuck in one place, and we've stayed ahead of these fires through and through this whole trip. So now we're gonna bomb five hours home. We're gonna try to find more fish for you guys. Tomorrow could be the best day yet. I'm thinking it's gonna be a grand finale, and it's shaping up to be a fantastic day of fishing. So thank you so much again for tuning in today, you guys. If you guys like this video and you wanna see more, go up here and click this link to this other cool video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn your bell notification on, and be sure to comment on this video because we'll be picking a comment of the day every single video that comes out. Here's the comment of the day. You guys stay fishy. We'll see you out there.